This video will show you how to properly use timeouts in Cyprus. You're watching Automate Now and I'm Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. We've all been there, waiting for a page to load, waiting for an element to show up, waiting for a spinner to disappear. While it is unavoidable to have to wait for this type of events, Cypress gives you complete control to handle them. However, if you don't properly handle timeouts, you will do yourself a disservice. One of the biggest issues being tests that take longer to fail. Now let's go to the code to learn about timeouts. We're going to begin by taking a look at this sandbox page at Automate Now. Here we have this option that says ads. Let's select this. When we come to this page, we see this message that says that an ad will appear in five seconds. And this is the ad that I'm talking about. So we're going to write a Cypress test that is going to close this ad. It's going to click on this X right here. Let's take a look at that. So I already started the test right here. It says navigates to ads page. And we're going to visit that page right here. Next, I need to find a locator for the X that closes the ad. I'm going to show you how to use the element inspector within the Cypress test runner to locate elements. So let me go ahead and bring up a terminal. And we're going to type npx Cypress open to bring up the Cypress test runner. And here we have the test runner. And this is our spec file right here called navigation. Let me go ahead and click this to run my test. Right now my test doesn't do anything. It simply navigates to the page. So this is the model right here. I'm going to click this button right here to inspect this close button right here. Notice the pop-up that comes up. It tells us what the locator should be for this element. We're going to use the CSS locator that Cypress has given us to click this button. Now to grab this locator is a little bit tricky because if I click this button right here, it's going to close the model and it's now going to give me the locator. For example, if I click something else, let's say this text right here, you're going to see that the locator shows up in this box right here. But if I click this box right here, the model disappears and it doesn't give me the locator that I'm looking for. However, I remember that the class name over here was dot close. So I'm going to type that in here and notice that we get one result shown over here. So this is the locator that we need. So let me go ahead and copy this and go back to my test. And here we're going to type cy.get and we're going to pass the locator that we got. Then I'm going to go outside of this parentheses and I'm going to say dot click. This one right here. Let me go ahead and save my changes here. And this will automatically kick off my test again. And we're getting an error that I did not expect. So let's go back to the code and take a look at what happened. This is the locator that I copied from the Cypress inspector. Notice that it has the cy.get. So there's no need for me to type cy.get again. So let me go ahead and remove this part right here. And let me pause here for a minute. I need to explain one important thing. Cypress has a default timeout of four seconds. In our case, we want to close an ad that takes five seconds to show up. This means that Cypress will wait up to four seconds before attempting to close that ad. This also means that this test may or may not pass given the one second difference between the time that the ad shows up and the time that Cypress is willing to wait. There's only one way to find out, and that is to run the test. So let me go ahead and save my changes here. And when I save this, the test runner will automatically execute my test again. And here we see the test is running again. The ad is not showing up yet. And notice that this test passed, but we never saw the ad. Now, why is that? Why did the test pass when the ad wasn't shown to the user. If we look over here, Cypress is smart enough to tell us that the element is not visible. Remember that Cypress has complete control of the browser. So even though the element is not visible, it's able to find it in the DOM and click on it. As we can see here, it was able to perform the click, but it's also telling us that the element is not visible. If we look here on the right, you're going to notice that the click was performed over here. And that's where the X button will normally appear. So let's go ahead and fix this test. We're going to first tell Cypress to make sure that the element is visible and then click on it. So here, instead of click, I'm going to say dot should. And this is an assertion that we're making. And we're going to say be dot visible. And only after the element is visible, we're going to click on it. So here we're going to say dot click. 
Now let's save our changes to rerun the test. Let's see what happens this time. Hopefully we should see the ad. And there, it was briefly shown on the screen. We saw the ad show up and then Cypress was able to click on it. We also see that the assertion passed. We expected to see the close button before clicking on it. And you may be wondering why Cypress was able to click on the button even though it's only waiting for four seconds, but the ad takes five seconds to show up. That may be due to minor differences on how long elements take to show up on the page. But I'm going to throw a curveball this time. I'm going to increase the time that the ad takes to show up. This time I'm going to increase it to seven seconds and our test should definitely fail. So let me go ahead and make that change to the website right now and I'll be right back. So I went ahead and made the needed changes. I increased the time to seven seconds before the ad shows up. Now I'm going to rerun the same test to see what happens. We should expect it to fail. Notice that here it says seven seconds now. And here Cypress is waiting the four seconds. Obviously the ad doesn't show up in time, so the test fails. And we see here it says time now retrying after 4,000 milliseconds. So Cypress noticed that the button wasn't available. So it waited four seconds before it timed out. Now let me show you the best way to handle this scenario. And right here where we said cy.get, we're passing the element that we're trying to find, but we can also pass in other options. One of those options is how long we want to wait for the element. So in this case, I'm going to say comma and in braces, I'm going to add timeout. Then colon, and I'm going to tell how many seconds I'm willing to wait. Since I know the ad takes seven seconds, I'm going to add 7,000 milliseconds right here. This line is getting a little long, so let me go ahead and drop this down. And now I'm going to rerun this test. Here we have Cypress waiting seven seconds. This time it was successful in clicking that button because we gave it enough time to find the button and click on it. So I told you that Cypress default timeout is four seconds. However, when you have scenarios like this one where you have to wait longer, you can specify a timeout like we did here. So in this particular instance, Cypress is going to take a little bit longer to wait for that element. I told you that this is the best way to handle this scenario. Now let me show you the worst way to do it. And for that, we're going to head over to the cypress.json configuration file. This file is located right here. Let's go ahead and open it up. This is the type of file that is used to set global configuration items. And here I have this base URL. This is simply saying, this is the URL I want all my tests to visit when they run. I'm going to show you how you can change the Cypress default timeout by using a global timeout in this file right here. So for that, I'm going to go to the end of this line right here, and I'm going to add a comma, and we're going to add a new item in here. This one is called default command timeout. Then we're going to add a timeout here. We're going to use 7,000 milliseconds. And this is how we can override the default timeout in Cypress. So instead of waiting four seconds, it is now going to wait up to seven seconds as it is needed. Now let me go back to my test here and I'm going to remove this timeout right here because we no longer need it. We are setting the timeout in the config file. Now let me go ahead and save everything and rerun the test. Right now the test is waiting seven seconds and we're able to see that the test still passes. So why is this a bad way of handling this scenario? The reason why I say that is because anytime that you increase the default timeout in Cypress, it means that your tests are going to take that much longer to fail. Depending on the application that you're testing, some tests may require you to have a longer timeout, while others may require you to have a shorter timeout. That's why it is best to use a timeout at the command level. So over here in this test, when we use the timeout in this line here, we told Cypress to take a little bit longer for this command only, while keeping the default timeout of four seconds for the rest of the test. I hope you now have a clearer picture of how timeouts work. This video also showed you how to make assertions. If you would like to learn more about assertions, check out the video on the screen. I'll see you in the next video.